What's up, Shred Sexies? Welcome back. Death of the Fingers. Just start off this week's lesson with essentially just clarifying more about one of the previous lessons we did where I did this crazy arpeggio sequence in C major. Essentially showing you all the borrowed chords, <clears throat> but I did it as an arpeggio sequence, so let's just go through it with respect to the chords and then just explain what I did there because somebody made this awesome post and essentially uh you're totally right you're seeing all the voice leading going on here and you get a good relationship there but if you'd zoomed out one more level you would have seen the idea of parallel keys too and that would have been the trifecta for you to be like ah final level of understanding right so then you can take that that major piece of information apply it to any key now and get the exact same effect Instead of it being locked into just a certain sequence of chords, now you've unlocked the key to do any key, right? The key to do any key. <clears throat> yeah, whatever. Okay, so the initial sequence was this C major 7 right down to the B diminished. Of course, you should be able to play these all as chords. I'm doing drop chords here, this B flat 7, <clears throat> and name them. That's A minor 7, essentially, right? That's A flat major 7. You got G7, G minor, F major 7, F minor, right? Then I've got this E minor, scooting down here, this E flat major 7. Into the D minor, D diminished. Into D flat major 7, into the root again, right? Right, so there it is, snagaloo. So essentially that was the monster size. And so if I took that and I deconstructed to the next level, I see I have this C major sequence, this C major chord, and then I have the <clears throat> D minor chord, then E minor. Then I've got this F major seven. I've got G seven. I've got A minor. I've got B diminished. And I've got C major, that's the first key I chose, was the major key, and then I was like, I wanna now play its relative minor, I wanna not play it, sorry, its relative minor, its parallel minor. You know, I wanna now take this C major chord and convert it to C minor, and then apply the minor theory, right? Remember, I'm not playing this major scale step pattern anymore. That's where the step pattern from these, uh, from the, uh, you know, from the guitar codex stuff comes in importantly. It tells you the distances between the notes. Right now I'm doing this minor step pattern. Right, so I'm gonna get something completely different, right? This, the six degree is first, right? With a minor and then seven, diminished, half step up to major seven. Okay, well now I see where I get this E flat major seven from. Right? <clears throat> Climbing up a whole step again. What's this one? All right, that's F minor now. Then it's gonna be G minor. That's the third degree, right? Then it's gonna be this A flat major seven. I think we've seen that one, right? Then we're gonna jump up one more time. Which one's this? Four, right? Up to B flat seven. Nails it. Jumping up another whole step here, C minor. That's where we get the parallel stuff happening, right? One more step. What do I get? An up or another whole step that's going to give me this D diminished here. And then I'm jumping up one more time to get back to, of course, in this case, just the E flat major chord. That's a great way using the triad to just end your idea because it's got like the most stable sound. It's it's the most solid molecule or whatever. <laughs> it has the most stable valence electrons. Okay, forget it. I was trying to get scientific and failed. Don't shoot the messenger. So that was the key. <clears throat> That's where I got all of those other, except for, except for this D flat major seven. I'm not going to give it away. Where does it come from? Doesn't matter. <clears throat> But if you want to, that's a great thing. So now I understand that the C major chord progression and the E flat major chord progression, this minor third here, is intimately tied. So anytime I want to move the key around, let's say if I moved it up here to the E, when I want to play its series of sort of parallel chords with it, right? And I'm going to move up this minor third here again. I'm going to be like, oh, look, that's going to be, which one's that? I'll leave it up to you. Okay, so that's where it all comes together. 
But to start with, start with something simple. Key of G, or maybe the key of, of G, sorry. C, and the key of G. Right, so you got this is the first one. If I'm gonna move up, the next one's gonna be another major seven. It's major seven, right? <clears throat> major seven. Actually, it would be diminished there. Then, so go both ways, and that way you'll get the full workout, and then just move the key center and instead of doing a G, start over here with B, maybe B major seven. Then up to C major seven, right? Then diminish. Then minor. Now you notice uh, there's some ideas there, and listen, in my opinion, that transition sounds better musically. So if I were actually practicing this stuff for real, which I do with arpeggios because I don't need the chord workout, but maybe this would be really great for you, kind of thing. Uh, if if I was doing that, essentially, right? I'm I'm now basically sort of always going to use that configuration so if I start here and then I have to do a half step another one then it's minor then it's diminished which means I now have to jump up to the next one and play the next chord kind of situation because that progression of the voice leading sounds a lot more logical when you go from diminished to just minor seven you're like eh, not great but the other way <clears throat> Sure, it can be really, really awesome. Okay, so there it is. Always try to take it to its logical conclusion. What key works with the other key? How do these two things? Extracting out all of the chords that you thought were basically in the same key, and there should be a lot in there, F, G, C, D minor, E minor. I mean, those, those ones should be right off the top of your head, C major right away, boom. But then looking for the other one, and you're like, okay, I'm starting to see it. It's just basically C major over top of C minor. Nice. All right, let's get into this Ionian stuff. All right, future Shred Lords, let's get into this Ionian stuff. Essentially, you know, the first sort of level of information. You don't need me to sit here and sort of hold your hand as you start to go through these various scale systems like the G-type there. That's the classical method, maybe three notes per string. whatever it's going to be kind of thing, but instead to sort of think creatively and outside the box, how to take this 2D information and turn it into like musical information, right? So the first one is this obviously idea of just combining these scale shapes in different ways all together at once, not just practicing them in a vacuum where I'm sort of sitting here, I'm just going to ascend. No, I'm going to sort of then move up to this major position in three notes per string. tried to shut up for the most part and just kind of go through some basic ideas there. You don't have to be perfect. What you have to do is get comfortable with the idea of just moving them around. Once you do that, now you can start to arrange them in better ways, right? Once you get good to the scale part, but notice I still try to make it for the most part musical. Just, just sort of sit there and just, you know, just grind through the scale. No. I tried that. Slides, pauses, vibrato. Again, trying to do sequences of notes. Maybe factoring in thirds. Right? Maybe fourths. Maybe 
factor in the thirds now from here. Moving down. Fifth there. Six. Another six. Another fifth. Another six. That again comes from all of those notes that we just played in the scale. Right, of course, this first one. There it is. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect fifth. Right, then the next one was moving to this third again. That's where I got those two, and then. So later on, you can either see them as scales when you're doing those kind of interval things, or you can see them as arpeggios, basically building one off this note, this note, this note, this note, this note. This note. Right, but I like to see it all from like the scale perspective. When I go to an arpeggio, I'm just selecting specific notes of the actual scale. And then I'm into the arpeggio again. Maybe get that was pretty interesting <clears throat> can't notice how i just sort of take chances now listen, I'm doing it at my level. Maybe it sounds a little better. Maybe it sounds like total shiatsu. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Don't be afraid. Guys like Bach are remembered as the greatest composers ever. Not because he just wrote the greatest music, of course, but because the man could just sit down and instantly create it. He just sat down and wrote the music out. Yeah, sure, he fleshed out the ideas a little bit and the chord structures, but he just sat there and wrote it out, like almost perfectly. Done. That's the ideal you're working towards. And it's the same thing when you do these things. In this mindset, you're like, I'm working in the major scale, right? So you're sort of giving this flavor. Or major. Or maybe the major seven. grace feel right time I move to the next mode, I'm still playing in the Ionian position. This and this all use the same notes. Okay, I'm not actually moving outside the mode, even though I'm moving to the Dorian position, the second degree. If I wanted to play in Dorian, which of course I wouldn't do because Major and Dorian don't necessarily play well, well together. If I did Dorian and Aeolian, that would be much better. Maybe in this case, I want to use Lydian, which is more. Then I would move the Lydian position here to this, to this first degree here. And then I would do everything relative. Then that would make this Mixolydian. Oh, look, there's that B minor configuration. A great sympathetic key as far as the G major is concerned. Right, but it all came from the idea that I'm starting here in this Lydian position. Now, of course, the, the backing track is still basically firmly in G major, right? So you gotta kind of be careful. You might want to start in Lydian. And then come back down in the major. obviously is going to be also very uh, 
useful and advantageous to practice the idea of destabilizing the idea you actually want to come to. The, the final place you want to end up is this G major here. But you're like, if I just go up and down, G major, even if I did some cool, It sounds okay and stuff like that, but there's no spiciness there. It's not enough sort of like, no, I did. I think I just pulled a Mike Tyson and not enough. <laughs> Mike, don't beat my ass. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to make fun of you. I just saw a really great meme today and it made me think of you. And then all of a sudden I just did it. Freudian slip. Don't worry. I, I feel like I've been punched in the face about 25 million times too, man. I'm just dopey naturally. So, you know, you're probably actually smarter than I am. So here's the thing, right? Like the, the, the idea that I'm now going to destabilize before I restabilize obviously is very good. Again. That gives me the tools. It's a great way of doing it. <clears throat> I got to do it in the right moment. You might have to use Mixolydian. Same diff, right? But there it is, and that's those all those major scales basically superimpose over top of each other, right? So now you have to take the codex and essentially use it in a multi-dimensional aspect. So now you're going to take major. You're going to take Lydian. And you're going to take mixed Lydian. And basically layer them all over uh, each other right now. Obviously, this major mixolydian play pretty good together, and you can just basically swap the notes around. So that's quite nice, right? So there it is. That's the scales part of it. Start by just starting to get comfortable by just ascending in the different scales always trying to land on home base combine them together okay there it is with the scales <clears throat> now of course you're gonna have to work up to that level but don't just sit there and no negative instead where does this come from that's the first clue oh look that's locrian so i'm like okay here's the major scale as three notes per string and then down in locrian just end there. Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. Hmm, that 
it's Aeolian. Right? Okay, I'm seeing that one. That's this one. Right, that's this one. Low and then three notes per string major. You're starting to see how these things overlap, but then you can just select a, a small portion of them, right? It's, it's right there. <clears throat> Done, right? So let's get into the little section on our patios. All right, future shred lords, let's get into these arpeggios. I'm not going to go too crazy. I mean, it'll probably end up getting crazy, but we'll try to keep it relatively light. Obviously, first stage is just getting used to the technique and the fingerings and, uh, you know, the sort of hand dexterity necessary to just execute on the actual arpeggios, right? Right, once you get that far kind of situation, again, you don't have to go fast, just... Try to make actual melody lines. Right again, moving that G up to this bad boy. Not so bad, right? Or maybe jumping up here to this one. Or substituting in that major seven variety. Nice, that's based on the cage system. But uh, initially, I'm just starting here playing the, the regular ones. Now I can see that there's this duality again with major and minor in this case. But of course, we talked about it. There's the original one where I'm just playing this. And then I look for its parallel key, which is just converting it into the minor. But now I've got the relative major here. All right, so again, you're starting to see that these, these one position has multiple states whether it's going to be the E minor flavor, whether it's going to be the parallel minor, or the major. And of course, for the minor here, I'd probably just substitute in diminished. Which is going to sound better in my opinion, but I'll leave it up to you. And of course, yes, you can always evolve these. That's awesome, right? Of course, if you really went deep, you know, you can be like, well, look, there's the one chord. There's the A type from Cage. That's the four chord. That's the five chord, A type chord, right? So that means I've got this now. Oh, nice. So I have all those arpeggios in there, too, of course. Now, listen, those are just a sort of what I call the skeletons. You're going to want to fill it in a bit. You're not just going to want to sit there and just... Part of your practice session is going to be like that, but the other part's going to be, you know, like... Like that you know what i mean <clears throat> and then you can go the full monty in this case which is using the three notes per string system now i'm going to do it vertically okay meaning i'm going to sack everything including these three notes now or six notes i should say from the locrian position there 
and I can go full on out with all the, the all the dominant arpeggio spikes. Too. Right, so I get all these ones. Right, so I mean, it's a it's a great flavor. Right, so there's are all in there, and again. You can, together right adding some bends and vibrato rates outside oh look there's this pentatonic odorian maybe add the flattened third into it and then back to the arpeggio. Done, right? So, I mean, it's up to you to sort of like mess around with them kind of situation, put them in different sequences. You've got this guy. That's a great sequence, right? There's a major. Adding in the 11 there. And of course, it leads me right into it again. God. Right, this is getting me to the pentatonic. Subtract just the major notes. Come on, you know, like now you have all kinds of things. Just start adding notes, subtracting notes in the sequence, combining the two scale systems together, putting multiple sets of arpeggios together, sort of combining this with the next one. So it's all there for you to, to sort of dissect. Do not get into tunnel vision. Just be like, it's this. No, it starts off with that. And then start to see how you can fill it in with other notes. And then you'll be riding high, baby. it if you got any comments which you don't because you never do <laughs> smash them down below yeah do the like thing whatever subscribe if you want to uh the codex information if you want to grab ones down in the description below thank you for all your support i love you guys thank you to all the new subscribers thank you for checking out the music you're all amazing Keep working hard on your music journey. You'll be amazing one day, too. I guarantee it. We'll see you in the next one.